Okay, I think it's installment three of my Fruits series. Just really a great story, okay? A God story for you. Well, a Justine story. God and Justine. So, let's venture in to a hard conversation where fruit is also revealed. Okay, so back in Galatians 5, 22, one of the fruits, this is the passion, one of the fruits is kindness in action. So I had just given my keynote at Women at the Well, and you can watch the first two installments of this series. We'll link them below. And um, no doubt left people curious wondering, wanting to fix it, in awe. My story tends to do that to people. And at the same time, I think all of our stories can do that to people because we all got the hard stuff, right? So uh, we decided to go explore the campus at Windshape um, and the college there, Barry College, so beautiful. And so there's a group of us that went driving around and um the we started walking to the car and one of the girls said you know like I'm gonna pray like and man I just can feel it God's gonna do something huge I'm gonna pray like I'm gonna pray for this baby for you and I was like I don't know like I don't want a baby I mean I know it's hard and it's sad and I have acceptance there's both I guess I wasn't quite there with the words yet. And then we kind of all pile in and we all have great conversation. And one of the other women, um, you know, she just flat out asked, can, can I ask you about your journey? I said, of course, like, of course. You can probably be assured that I've been asked the question before, but I, I live this life transparently, wholeheartedly, vulnerably, and I believe that's where our healing will take place in connection. And so, yes, you can ask me. Because I also knew she was going to ask me out of love and curiosity, but not just this like place of judgment. And so, um, you know, she, she was like, you know, we struggled to, um, have children and we did treatments to conceive our children. And, um, and she just, she asked all the normal questions. Um, how come you don't adapt? Like, um, how come you don't try again? All of these questions. And meanwhile, my new friend, Brooke, who said that she really needed to pray over me from the last installment, um, she was sitting with me. We were stuck in the third row, and um, she was just part of part of this conversation, kind of, of observing. And I was able to, like, own my truth with this car full of Christian women. And as I have wrestled with my faith over the last almost five years, I mean, lifetime, let's be honest, and I've shared a lot of that with you all, um, I'm not sure there's a group of people who try to fix my pain more than Christians. Why don't you just adopt? Christians are supposed to adopt. Um, you know, like they, I think in the faith community, we are not taught empathy and I am going to change that. We need to sit beside people, sit beside them with their pain and not try to fix it. Not tell them that this is God's plan, even though we all know it. Not tell them that this is God's will, or it's going to be okay, or if we just pray it will get better. Like, you don't need to fix it. That's not what people need to heal. People need to feel seen and known and loved. And if you think about it, Jesus did that in many ways. Yeah, he fixed people. Uh, cause he was divine and God and worked miracles. We are not. So I was able to have this conversation, this difficult conversation with these Christian women about a tough topic, the tough topic of infertility and loss, the tough topic of what do you do when you have extra embryos or if you have too many babies or like that adoption is a calling, all of these tough conversations that people who have never walked infertility and loss journey don't necessarily ever have to think about. 
And it's not just as simple and black and white as the Christian faith or as many of us in the Christian faith try to make it. The decisions that you have to make in the infertility journey are brutal and cannot be checked boxed into a black or white, easy, hard, yes or no answer. It's just not how it works, let alone all the emotions that go with it. And so we just had this like holy conversation where for honestly one of the first times I felt seen by Christian women who didn't necessarily, yes, they wanted to fix my pain. Yes, absolutely. They wanted to take it away because they had fallen in love with me. We had forged a new friendship, but because of their curiosity and my willingness to share my story, we were able to just sit with one another in our hard, big stories, no longer hard, big stories. And so then it was when we got to the, to the college campus and and then one of the, the one of the other women who happened was she was actually like driving so she didn't necessarily hear a lot of my story because I was all the way in the back and she kind of questioned me a little bit before like more I'm like you know I'm gonna pray and I think that there's a baby and I, I said I go here's the deal and God find God after all these years gifted me the words I don't want a baby I want my three babies that would be six I want those babies. It is, it's okay to do the work for acceptance. And I will forever yearn and wonder and have sadness. And I will be happy with this life I've created and that I've received and fought for. We must get more comfortable with this complicated gray in the Christian faith because if we don't I fear we're only going to continue to turn more people off faith is not black and white it is messy that's why we need it so in the next installment of the fruits we're gonna pick up with My name, identity. So I'll see you next time.